All right, are you guys ready for our last installment of our Christmas series? I am ready to go, and we've been set up quite well with the Advent as we have put, purposely put that and this, these messages together to help focus our hearts and um, uh, sharpen our minds. And so that's what we have been hoping to do. So again, this morning is our last installment of our Christmas series where, as you know, we have been focusing in on the names of this Son that has been given. He is, if you remember, Emmanuel, which means God is with us. He is the wonderful counselor. And I've still been chewing on that. The one who knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. And his counsel is right and should be followed, should be listened to, should be sought out. He is our wonderful counselor. Also last week we talked about Jesus being the everlasting Father, the source of all there is. And this son was also a father as we looked into his heart and the story or the passage about the prodigal son. Now this morning, the name that we're focusing in on is before all of those names. It is the name that was given to Moses as he encountered God on a mountain. And he asked him, well, who is this? Who should I tell them that is sending me? And the name was, I am who I am. So the main point of this message, and the one thing that I want you to walk away with this morning, is that God is all you need. And in Him is everything that matters. That's what I want you to focus in on. God is all you need, and in Him is all that matters. So first, God is all we need. In Him is everything. And by Him, Everything exists, and from, and from him, everything has its purpose. Did you catch that? Okay. Everything is in him. By him, everything exists, and everything has its purpose in him. If you want to know your purpose, you need to look to your maker. We can say amen right there. He made you for a purpose and a reason. He fashioned you as you are, as he delighted. And he has prepared things for us. He is the source. And in him where we find all things that we are created by him and find our purpose in him. Now, the Apostle Paul was led by the Holy Spirit to express these truths in his letter by way to us, to the church in Colossae. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. Talking about Christ, here it is. He is the image of the invisible God. Okay, this is Christ. The image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in heaven and on earth. Both things that we can see that are visible and also things that are invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Let this sink in. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, which is the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead. And in everything, he might be pre 
eminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. There's a lot in that passage. Okay? We need to take it slowly and let these words sink in. What does this mean? What does this mean for us? Like I said last week, if we want to understand the invisible God, we look to Jesus. Because Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is the first over all creation. Now, some religions think that Jesus was created. That's Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way. Okay? Jesus was not created. In the beginning was the Word. Okay? And the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He does not have a beginning, and he says this, he always was. But he is over, preeminent over all creation. All things were created by him. All things were created through him. And all things were created for him. This book is for you, but it's not about you. It's about him. And you're, and we, and this, and all of this, and God uses it. Because it's for Him, and we can't comprehend it now. But we're going to comprehend things a whole lot better on the other side. Amen. It's about Him. He is before all things, and all things hold together in Him. If you think things are pulling apart, He will hold you fast. He holds it together. He is the head of the church. It's no pastor who is the head. Ultimately, Christ is the head. Right? He is the firstborn from the dead. Now, there are others who were raised from the dead, most famously Lazarus. There's a difference between being raised from the bed, dead and being resurrected from the dead. Lazarus and others were raised back to life, but they died again. Jesus, he was raised, resurrected to life, and he will never die. The firstborn, do you like that? From the dead, meaning that we are in him and he is in us. We too will be resurrected. All the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in him. He wasn't like a subpart, a par part of the Trinity. All of the fullness was pleased to dwell in him. And through the fullness of God... He reconciled to himself all things, making peace between God and us by his own blood. There is no God in mythology. There is no God of other religions who sacrifices himself or itself or herself for its creatures. There is only one true God, and this is what he did by his own blood. God saved us. Now pay attention. God saved us from himself. God saved us by himself. God saved us for himself. And everything we need is found in him. This is this child. This is our God. This is the God who is what he is. God is who he is. There is no better way to describe him. 
So again, in this book, we see who God is and what God does and what that means. God created us and communicates to us and confronts us and convicts us and counsels us and comforts us and conforms us and connects us to him and to each other. He is who he is. By the way, have you heard about this book before? It's a bestseller. It's really good. It's the only book I know that as we read it, it reads us. New Year's coming up, friends. Okay, told you this before. I'm telling you again. Get a Bible reading program. Well, I am just led by the Spirit. Great. Do that after you read it systematically. I get you, right? Not a big fan of Bible roulette, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Read this. This is my challenge to you. This is my challenge to you as a church. Read this book this next year. Go get a program. I will give you a program. There's hundreds of them out there. I've been doing it every year that I've been a Christian by the grace of God. This is how you will grow. You express your Christianity in the context of communi- community. But you will grow spiritually from reading this and better yet again, letting it read you. Okay. So if you are, do not have a consistent Bible reading program, I'm telling you, I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you to read this. You get a reset, right? 2021, start again. I'm going to start again. We're going to start again. This is a God who is who he is, who reveals himself in Scripture. It's the best description of him because no one word can capture who he is. No one word can contain or accurately describe him. That's why we have so many names of God. And that's why he reveals himself time and time again with different adjectives, different um, aspects of who he is. So let's go to Exodus 3 for a moment. Okay? And here, as you know, Scripture Okay, I'm not going to bring us up to this point, but God's people were in bondage. Moses was set aside to deliver his people. He tried to do it in his own strength prematurely. He was sent out to the desert for 40 years. And as he was a shepherd, as he was walking in humility, as he was growing in understanding, he looked up to a side of a hill on top of a mountain and saw a fire. It's a bush on fire and it didn't burn out like every other thing he has seen before that was burning. And he's like, what's going on there? And he went to investigate. And so as he went up to this bush that would not extinguish, God spoke to him. This is Exodus 3 and described himself. He said, Moses, first take off your shoes. This is holy ground, because where God is, is holy. It's not about a location, it's about a presence. And he says, he says, I'm the God of your father, Moses, the God of Abraham. And we read about him in this book. I'm the God of Isaac, the son of promise. I'm the God of Jacob. And Moses rightly hid his face. For he and you and we are afraid to look at God. Because God had seen the afflictions of his people and heard their cries for deliverance. 
He commissioned Moses to bring his people out of Egypt and their slavery into a good land that he promised to give them. And you can read about that conversation. God says, I'm not some foreign God. I'm the God of your people, Moses, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm a holy God. And there was fear in Moses. And God explained to him what had taken place and told him what he was to do. And Moses responded to God in Exodus 3.13. If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, so he found out what he was to do, and he says, wait a second, now if I go there and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God is the only one that can wear a name tag that says I am. Okay. Our names say something about us. Because in it, we connect meaning. My name has a meaning. Okay, this is what I understand about this person. Your name has a meaning. God's name is incomprehensible. Tell them I am who I am. And I want you to pause and think about it. There is incredible truth to this description. And it's a credible description. He is who he is. Now we try to um, capture an essence of something with a name, right? For instance, this is a, what is this? A pulpit, we call it, right? And this pulpit, what does it do? It holds things. What is it made out of? Wood. What type of wood? No idea, right? I know it works, right? But if I knew this perfectly, I could tell you what wood it was. I can tell you who made it. I can tell you what dimensions it is. I can tell you how thick this is. I can tell you how many molecules are in this. God is the only one that can know anything perfectly. You and I just know in part. You will never know anything like God knows it. God is the only one who can understand anything perfectly. And he says, I am who I am. You cannot capture me with a single word. There are so many facets of who I am. Just tell them, I am sent you. And as we read this book and as God reveals himself through his word by his spirit in our reality, he shows us more about him by illumination and by information and by revelation. And we get to know him more. And he calls himself different things throughout Scripture and reveals himself in various ways to show us who he is in correlation to who we are and what we need. It's a good thing for you to do this next year. Every time God describes himself, underline it in your Bible. And you're going to see all of these things that are there. God is all sufficient. Now, Moses, in this encounter with God, when he heard what his task was, when he heard what the name was, Moses started to list all the reasons why he was a bad choice and could not do the job. Can you imagine that? Right? Talking to the one who created things, everything, telling him you made a mistake. Right? You know how dumb that sounds? How many times have you done that? How many times have I done that? So here's Moses listing all the reasons why he's a bad choice. I'm nobody. I'm afraid. I'm not very good at speeching. I'm not a very good speecher of speeching things. 
you kind of got my humor. Well done. Most people kind of get it. Now, God did not reply with a pep talk to Moses. He did not show Moses his hidden potential. He did not try to boost his self-esteem. Instead, he said, Moses, I did not choose you because you were any of those things. I am enough for all of those things. My amness is more than enough for your notness. I am with you, and I am enough. I am more than enough. I am all sufficient. I will give you what you need when you need it. Trust me. Now, do you guys catch that? In our culture, we try to give each other pep talks. You can do it. It's in you. Go for it. You're a mighty warrior. Or whatever. You notice God didn't do that with Moses. He's like, oh, Moses, you're being too hard on yourself. You're really good at speeching, right? He didn't say, oh, Moses, you're, you're somebody. You're somebody, Moses. Remember? Remember back in the, the, the river, right? Remember how you grew up in the Pharaoh saying? He didn't say any of that to Moses. He didn't give him a pep talk. He said, trust me. I am with you, and my I amness is greater than your notness. That's good news, right? The reality is, we're not enough. And the good news is, Jesus is enough. What he calls us to, he'll help us do. What he calls you to, he'll help you. You do. Because the point is not that you're enough. The point is that He is enough. And when we are weak, He is strong. Then we are strong. It's like God is attracted to humility and repelled by pride. Pride says, I'm enough. Look at me. Satan. We realize who we are in light of who he is. We recognize we are nothing. And God delights taking nothing and making something. That's what he does. This should give you hope. And God gave to Moses things that would help him. He gave him a staff that turned into a snake and then back into a staff. He gave him the ability to put his hand into his robe, take it out and it's leprous and put it back in, take it back out and it is healed. He gave him ability to pour water from the Nile on the ground and turn to blood. And he gave him a helper named Aaron to speak for him when he needed I'll give you what you need. I'm calling you not because you are enough, but I'm calling you because I'm enough. (laughs) And he said, Moses, this will be a sign to you in this very place. After you've brought these people out by my hand, you will worship me here on this mountain. And you will remember this encounter. And which indeed happened. Then, all throughout Scripture, God reveals more of whom He is. And He gives us more of His titles and His names so that we'll know Him, so that we turn to Him, and we trust Him because He is all we need. He is all sufficient. 
I'm going to give us some of these names, these aspects, these facets of the great I am. I see it as a hub with all these spokes. The great I am, and from him he is this, and from him he is this, and from him he is this, and from him he is this. When there is nothing, God says, I am Elohim, the God who creates everything. When you are not enough, he says, I am El Shaddai, the God all-sufficient. When there is chaos, God says and reveals himself, I am Adonai, the master and Lord of all things. When you have a need, the I am is Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord who provides. Do you like this? Okay. Do you see these things? Right. When we have a need, it's time for God to show up. There's chaos, there's not enough, there's nothing. The I am is injected to our, into our situation and reveals an aspect of who he is. When you're unwell, he says, I am Jehovah Rafi, the Lord who heals. When you are low, he says, I am Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who lives up. When you are in need of forgiveness, I am Jehovah Rohai. The Lord who sanctifies. When you're in need of peace, I am Jehovah Shalom. The Lord your peace. When you feel alone, I am Jehovah Shammah. The Lord who is there. And when you need a defender, I am Jehovah Shabbos, the Lord of the angelic armies. Do you like that? If you have a list of titles for God, and this was just Old Testament. And we turn the page after 400 years of prophetic silence. This son is born. And this continues as Jesus. And this is just in the book of John. He says over and over again, he says, I am the bread of life. If you are hungry, come to me. I am this. And he uses that phrase intentionally. All who are thirsty, I am the living water. All you who are living in darkness, I am the light of the world. All of you who are inside and outside the door and can't get into the kingdom, he says, I am the door. All of you who need a shepherd and you're harassed and you don't know what to do and you're beat down, he says, I am the good shepherd. All of you who, who are looking for the way, he says, I'm the way. Those of us who are struggling to know what is true and what is the truth, he says, I am the truth. All of us in this life, in particular at her hour of death, he says, I'm the life. And if you stick to me, I'm the vine. You're the branches and there will be fruitfulness coming out of your life. I am the king of all kings and the Lord of all. You see this continual revelation and progression from the beginning of this, I am who I am, and he tells us, this is who I am, this is who I am, this is who I am, this is who I am. This is what I do. Will you trust me? Who are you, O oh man, not to trust the God who is enough when he tells you to trust him? All that you need, all that you lack, all that you can never be in yourself, Jesus is. He is the great I am. He is all that you need, and in him is all that matters. Okay? What child 
is this. And he is the gift of Christmas. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The greatest gift that God can give is the gift of himself. Do you understand that? No matter how great a gift you have given or received, there's nothing nor no one will top this gift. Jesus, Emmanuel, who is God with us. Jesus, who is the wonderful counselor. Jesus, who is the everlasting father. Jesus is the great I am. So my prayer for us in this new year that you will experience renewed joy in who God is. When's the last time that you experienced joy because of who God is? Something we typically don't think about, and I'm asking you, telling you to think about it. God, who are you? And how does that relate to my context? How does this relate to this situation? And he invites us. This is amazing. God invites us to talk to him. God says, I can be and will be involved in this. He's not far away from anyone. Into the darkest of days, the light has dawned. I don't like this time of the year where it's really, really dark out. Tomorrow is the shortest day. Tomorrow, tomorrow is the shortest day. What was that? I missed that. Yay, okay, the shortest day. I like getting up in the morning and where there's sun shining and birds tweeting and I don't have to put on 17 layers to get out of bed. I like coming home after work and there's light. I don't think it's by chance that the magi, the wise men, followed a star. Right? By the way, there's going to apparently be a very cool star happening tomorrow. Read about it. Okay? The Christmas star. In the darkness, there's a light. And in our darkness, there's a light. Receive him. Revere him. Reflect him. Remember him. You are never without hope. Because Jesus is enough. He's with you, not against you. He's for you. You created for him and by him and through him. Trust him. Now, Paul instructing, and we're going to turn into, we're going to go over to communion. Paul instructing this young man, Timothy, who was a pastor, summed up the great mystery of our faith. And I don't, I don't think I have it here. Okay, this is 1 Timothy chapter 3, 16. He says, without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in the human body. He was vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations. He was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. And this is the one we remember and this is the one that we anticipate his return. Right? And you can say amen to that. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. But until then, we have a job to do. You were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which is prepared in advance for you to do. And we can only do these things by grace, through faith, and what Christ did. He's in us. He didn't leave us as orphans. He is working through us. And he is continuing to work out his sovereign plan, even through political chaos, even through infections throughout the world, even through disparity, even through 
all things. So look for him. Jesus, what are you doing? Jesus, what are you saying? And how can I reflect you in this? And so God gave us, Jesus gave us a command. <laughs> it says, remember me, 